my guest today finds and uses innovative technology to meet the critical needs of sick Nigerians. Join me in welcoming Temi Giwatobo. So please, a round of applause. Hi. Thank you so much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah, you lived overseas, even practiced overseas, and you're back in the country now. What have been the challenges that you've been facing? Um, I think it's the same challenge that okay. most um, Nigerians face, um, mostly infrastructure challenges. Okay. Um, so when I got to Nigeria, when I, when I moved back, um, I, thought I, I thought I would just build a software company and plug it into mm -hmm. a logistics, a smart logistics system that was already <laughs> in place. <laughs> And it turns out I have to, to your build my own. <laughs> Things don't work that fast and that well here. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> so, like, the biggest problem is you're a software company, but you have yeah. to do distribution yourself. You have to figure out how to distribute your product uh, to the right customer. And, and that was something I wasn't quite prepared for. So what, what have you been doing to make sure that these things work the way you planned it? Right, we just had to build it, right? We had to build yeah. our own logistics system. We had to build a cold chain logistics. So wow. wh what we do is we transport these essential medical products like blood, you know, vaccines, uh, blood products like plasma and platelets. And um, hospitals need it, and they okay. need it in a short... No, sorry. No, not, to, not to cut you, because you, you were getting into my next question, which oh, is, right. uh, <laughs> like when you, as soon as you mentioned blood, mm -hmm. yeah, you run Life Bank. Mm -hmm. Now, tell us about Life Bank. Right. You know, you know when, when you say bank in Nigeria, the first thing that comes to our mind is money. Mm -hmm. uh, unless you add blood bank, then we'll right. answer, okay, maybe it has to do with blood. But this one, <laughs> but this one is Life Bank. Right. What is Life Bank about? LifeBank is a software and logistics company mm -hmm. trying to sort of transform the Nigerian health system yeah. uh, uh, using a, a very simple discovery system for blood and blood products and anything that hospitals need okay. to save lives, but they will not stock, okay. right? So hospitals can discover it on our platform, and then we deliver the products in the right condition to the hospital within 55 minutes. Okay, so uh, a bulk of it ha has to do with, you know, um, Blood and technology, those are the words that keep jumping out, blood right. technology. Right. So I, I guess we are sourcing this blood from Nigeria. Yes. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we things like blood of Jesus. <laughs> you know, once, once it comes to blood, we are, we are one kind. Of course. Of so course. you guys are into blood money, kind of. Oh, no. <laughs> no, no, no. Not really. I won't put it that way. <laughs> okay, okay. All right. Yeah, talking about uh, using technology to right. bring, um, to change the face of healthcare in Nigeria. Yeah. Right. you know the drone thing and all yeah, that you yeah. know how did that idea come about and, you know. so um, a few years ago I discovered a fact okay. uh, that uh, the highest cause of maternal mortality yeah. I mean I think everybody who's watching anybody in Nigeria has somebody they know who died uh, yeah. while giving birth it's a problem it's an entrenched true, problem true, true. that we've been dealing with in this country for a long time so I found out that the highest cause of maternal mortality in Nigeria in Africa and in the entire developing world is something called postpartum hemorrhage. Basically, mm. a mom uh, gives birth and starts yeah. bleeding, yeah. and if she doesn't get the blood she needs, she's going to die within two hours. So it's a very short uh, time frame. When I discovered that problem, and then subsequently, I also found out that uh, there was a lot of blood in the, in the country, especially in Lagos. Yeah, there will be blood now. <laughs> <laughs> blood all over the place. All right, 18 million people, right. there has to be blood. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, there's, there's a lot of blood in the, in the country. We yeah. just needed to figure out how hospitals who need it can get it in the right condition. So yeah. it has to be safe, it has to be quick, and it has to be you know, cost effective. Quick is important. Absolutely. And in a, in a place like Lagos with you know, our unique traffic situation, I guess that is where the drones come into yes. it. Yes, so has, the, the drone delivery, has it been effective? So we don't use drones oh, yet, okay. right? Okay, not yet. Not yet. Because I've been wondering. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So we think Lagos, so we think different, different sort of location are best, um, you, you use different products for different locations. Okay. So there are places where drones make perfect sense. Usually river Rhine areas, um, okay. um, in river states, you know, or those, those sort of communities in uh, Bayelsa, those communities will be best fit, fit for, if best fit for drones. Uh, you have places that are very hard to reach, maybe hilly places. How does someone, I'm sure there are people who are listening and wondering, how does someone take advantage of the kind of services that you guys provide? Mm -hmm. Is it that somebody needs to register with you or call you? Or if there's, let's say somebody in Agege has need for your services, right. what do they do? How do they even know you exist? Right. You know, how do they, 
it's so, important. So we, we run a system. First, we, we transport using bikes, motorbikes, that okay. are fitted with the right uh, equipment yeah. uh, to keep this blood safe while in transport. How do I know about Life Bank? Like, if for a woman who is, like I said, mm -hmm. who is in the hospital in Yagege, right. okay, right. and you're in need, right. How do I get to know about you right. before you even dispatch your people to? Right. Yeah, so, you so you, generally we are a B two B com, uh, company, so okay. we, st we we work directly with businesses. Okay. So we work directly with your hospital. Okay. So oh, if you are in your hospital and okay. you need it, okay. you just tell your doctor. Oh. Have you heard about Life Bank? Mm -hmm. Call them; they will get it to you in the in the next fifty five minutes. All right, you hold your thoughts there. You hold your thoughts. <laughs> Don't even go anywhere. It's, you can see that this conversation is getting more and more revealing and interesting. We'll be back. Don't stay there. Don't go anywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, mm. All right, welcome back. Um, it's the other news. I'm here with the interesting uh, Temigiwa Tobosu. Yeah, we're having uh, this very interesting conversation about uh, Life Bank and the wonderful service that you've been providing. It's interesting to know that you know, you studied overseas, worked overseas, and you came back to Nigeria to set up this life, you know, saving scheme. In, in a country where most of our medical personnel are leaving yeah. to go practice their, their trade overseas, yeah. you know, how is it affecting healthcare delivery in Nigeria? I mean, this exodus of people in the medical industry. Right, and the, ones, the one that gets the most attention is you know, the doctors, but it's not just the doctors living, nurses are living, yeah. a lab scientists are living, a lot of people are living. Yeah, you know. and, and it's a difficult country, it's a difficult country to live in. You know, mm -hmm. I, I think all Nigerians would, say, would, would like attest to that. Yeah. Uh, but I think there's still, what I think is we need to celebrate and focus on the people who are staying. And okay. there are still lots and lots of physicians who are, who are in the trenches, <laughs> who are working really, really hard. Okay. There are lots of nurses who take care of all of us. There are lots of lab scientists. And our, our job at Life Bank is to really focus on those people, help them figure out what their pain points are and solve them. Yeah, I think you have a point. We should celebrate those who have not left. Yes. Maybe that will make them change their mind. Because some people are thinking, you know, it's as a result of this movement of our personnel that Mr. President decided to move with them. <laughs> you know, I, I don't know. Mm. But how do you see a situation where our president goes for things like medical checkup overseas right. and we have people who are here practicing? Right. You know, how, how do you see that scenario? I think that... Um, How do people in the health delivery sector see it? Because it, it looks like a vote of no confidence on that sector. It does, it does seem like that. And, and to be quite honest, this, this sector has been um, underinvested in for a very long time. Mm -hmm. So from both sides, I understand. Uh, the president has to make sure that he's a human being. He has to take mm -hmm. care of himself. But at the same time, the country needs deep investment in healthcare, and we need to really focus on that. And it starts with all branches of government, looking at healthcare as an opportunity to invest in our people and make sure that we can really capture the growth that, that is coming to Nigeria. Good. I, I'm, 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 glad you touched, I'm glad you touched on deep investment in, in the healthcare sector. Uh, the government is 1% of the budget will go into health. Mm -hmm. you know, is that sufficient? It's not sufficient. We actually, Nigeria actually signed a, a, um, a global agreement uh, a few years back uh, that says we will commit 5% of our budget to healthcare. That has never been. We've never actually got into that stage. I think as a country, we have to take healthcare seriously. We have to actually go back to what we, we promised in the past, which is 5% of our budget should go into healthcare. And, and, and we need to do it now, 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 now. Okay, good. We need to do it now. Yes. We need to do it now, 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 now. It's urgent. Yeah, you've been listed as one of the one of Nigeria's most influential women. Uh, even the BBC did list you. You know, how does that make you feel? I mean, you know. Um, so I am a generally shy person and, yeah. and that, that doesn't really like but because I can imagine seeing myself on the list of one of the most influential <laughs> people in Nigeria, like it could be like any tiny bandage for her. <laughs> My head will be swelling. Right. Yeah. Right. Um I think it just it just makes me feel proud of what we've built at Life Bank. Yeah. Uh, the amazing people that I work with. I have over twenty uh, employees yeah. who help me build this company every single day. And I think it's, um, unfortunately, I'm the one who gets to be awarded, but it's their award, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, yeah, it's good. It's... Wow. Okay, this uh, awesome job that you're doing, trying to, you know, add your, a bit of technology to saving lives in Nigeria. 
Uh, someone said that the problem in Africa is that those who have ideas don't have power. Mm -hmm. And those who have power like ideas. So you're one of those who have idea, but you need power mm -hmm. to, you know, optimize or maximize the ideas that you have. Absolutely. And to get in that power requires a bit of politics. Mm. And it's a question I keep asking people, it's very mm. young people when they come on the show. Mm. Is there politics in your future? <laughs> um, because, I, we, you know, we can have all these beautiful ideas and let those who don't have ideas continue to control stuff. Mm, mm. I, think, I think everybody in Nigeria should participate in the political process. Yeah. I, am, I am a citizen. I will vote. I will use that right. I it's not just a right, it's a responsibility as yeah. far as I'm concerned. So I must participate in the political process. <laughs> However, <laughs> however, <laughs> my skills are best used yes. uh, to to build policy, build systems. That's what I'm good at. That's what I've always done. Yeah. So I would I would say that some people should be technocrats to to build systems to to create change, mm -hmm. and some people will be the political cover for those technocrats. When somebody says tomorrow, come and be our minister for health. You won't say no. But that's not a political job. It's a, it's a technocrat technocratic job. So I would but say it's, yes. It's a political position. Uh, really? <laughs> all right. I'll take it. <laughs> okay, fine. That's nice. I like that you're thinking in that direction because right. I want all, everybody to be involved. Right. So finally, uh, what do you say to the young woman, young girl who's listening to you today and thinking I'm motivated by what she's doing? What would your advice be? Start whatever. The problems in your society are opportunities for you to build change, for you to build change and show what you can do. Don't wait for permission from anyone. Do, they would not give it. Well, so yeah, give yourself I the know. permission to start and to build the change you want to see. Thank you very much. It's been nice to you. Thank you so much. Really appreciate you.